only. Carry on only. Dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. With award-winning photographer, creative director, and travel expert, Jill Pater. Jill has worked in over 100 countries, has published 21 books on architecture, design, travel, and gastronomy. Now, here's Jill and her co-host, Lisa Polachek. Today, we're going to give you a bonus episode in the Carry On Only series, and we're going to talk with Jill about where her, like her prescriptions, her travel prescriptions for us. Robin and I are going to try to stump her with styles of traveling or kinds of destinations we'd be interested in and see if Jill can match us up with an appropriate destination. So Robin, why don't you see if you can uh, get some good advice? (laughs) I got a new nickname for you, the travel matchmaker. Ooh, Ooh, I I love that. I like it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So being that I, I think all three of us are single, pretty much, Where would you recommend is the best vacation spot if we're looking to kind of, I don't know, have a, have a summer fling or (laughs) you know, just kind of like a a romantic (laughs) fling because you, you hear all these things or you see all these things in wonderful Mm. romantic movies and we know it's just the movies, but everyone has this romantic fantasy of running into somebody that just sweeps them off their feet for this little getaway. So where would you recommend that a single person could go have a romantic time, maybe? Well, I have a couple hot spots for that. Uh, so the first one, and it's a location that we featured in this season of Carry On Only, is Bali. Ooh. Bali is just a great place. Like, for single, it's, you know, the eat, pray, love. It's the love part of eat, pray, love. I don't think you can go wrong there because you'll have a great time on your own. You're going to meet lots of other single people you're going to meet tons of surfers. There's great nightlife there. Lots of Aussies. So if Aussies mm-hmm. are your <laughs> your thing, go, go for it. Surfers, right? You can't, oh, kind of can't go wrong. The right? foreign accent. Yes. Ooh. Yes. You're going to have your pick of the litter there for sure. Another place which isn't like necessarily known as a pickup place, but one that I just absolutely love for so many reasons is Cape Town. And we featured Cape Town on last season. But it's a great place because it's young. It's, there's, they do tons of film shooting there at Southern Hemisphere, so opposite seasons that we have here. And there's just tons of young people, tons of international people there. It's great nightlife, a great vibe. Just a, it's a really cool place. You're going to have an amazing time traveling there regardless. But I think you can pick up some people, pick up some romance there as well. Uh-huh. And then last but not least is Punta del Este in Uruguay. It's the top New Year's Eve destination in the world. And what? it's party central. Mm, I didn't it's know It's party that. central. Like everybody it, goes Say there. the name again. Punta del Este. Okay. It's and, in Uruguay. Wow. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, it takes a little bit of effort to get there, but it's well worth it. It is the number one New Year's destination. People go there to party. It's where everybody in South America goes. So if you like Latin guys or girls... That is your place. Huh. Better than Mardi Gras. Yes. Okay, here's one that I know you're going to be able to, to absolutely nail because you d- had a lot of Asian uh, destinations yes. this season. I've never been to Asia. Mm-hmm. What's a good place for me to get started? There are a lot. I would say the top two, and it just depends kind of on what you like to do the most, but mm-hmm. I think Hong Kong and Singapore are two great places to get started. They're both very easy. They're tourist friendly. They're both English speaking, which is helpful. That's a relief. And they both have deep cultures that where it kind of gives you that stepping stone where you're going to feel comfortable mainly because of the language. You have like all that transportation and infrastructure to work with. And you're, you're going to be able to learn better because you don't have that additional barrier of language. Cool. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Now, if I only speak English, right? I you know. <laughs> where, right? Do, where do I go that's like user friendly? Because I don't know a lot of foreign languages. I maybe know a few minor words only because I grew up in the Southwest, and I'm from a. My father's from Canada, so we do know a little French, but it's not enough to get me by internationally anywhere. So, take for instance me being a single woman. You travel quite a bit, being you know by yourself. What is the best place for someone who doesn't speak a foreign language where they can go actually have fun? 
Well, the nice thing, the great thing about English as being your primary, your native language is that most places in the world are, most major cities and ma major tourist destinations are English speaking friendly. So you'll be able to get around to some extent. But I do know what you're saying, Robin, like sometimes you just don't want that added barrier or you feel uncomfortable, or maybe you're just not so used to traveling that you kind of want to like dip your toe in the pool and still have a great time and still have that international experience. But you, you, you want the comfort of English. There are so many places, again, I would say to narrow it down, it would depend like what type of travel do you like? So are you looking for an adventure travel place? Are you looking for more of a city kind of environment where you can go out and shop and, and do all those things? What's your ideal trip? For me, I'm the one that likes to go off the map a little bit. I don't like like a predetermined tour. I like to just kind of jump in a car and go someplace with somebody that would know the off the wall places to go. Mm -hmm. You know, when I went to England 20 some odd years ago, I had a pen pal that lived there. So we jumped in the car and just toured the country wow. from top to bottom. And I really wanted to see Stonehenge. And he goes, uh, uh, no. I said, how about going what? over to Paris? He goes, no. Us Brits don't like that. So I love that we did all the off the wall kind of stuff. And that's what I look for is just something that's more adventure seeking. I don't want to do the typical thing that everyone goes and does on the typical tour. I want to see something a little different. So when I take my photographs, when I have those memories with me, it's something that everyone goes, wow, you did something completely different than what I would have done. But I think that's awesome. Now I want to go check that out. Yeah. Well, and the thing about you, Robin, that's so great is you're such an adventurous spirit and, and person that I think you'd be fine almost anywhere in the world. But it, like in terms of English speaking destinations, Ireland, if you haven't been, Ooh. is amazing. South Africa, again, English is a you know common language. Also, other languages spoken there, but a great adventure place. I think you would totally dig Australia as well. Australia, New Zealand. Both stunning countries, lots, lots to see in both those destinations. But I think, Robin, you it would be interesting if we took you to, like, South America, to Argentina, which we featured in this season, Chile, which we featured last season. Like, these places that have this adventure, this landscape, and kind of a bit of the nightlife in the cities that I think you like as well. So I think, I think you're safe anywhere, but those would be my top ones for English, specifically English-speaking destinations. So have no fear. Just get out there and exactly. travel. I, I, think like we, I think we need to just put you, get you an around the world ticket and see where you land. <laughs> Ooh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're, well, you're, I don't want to say you're a big eater. That That's not the way. I don't want <laughs> to sound that I way. Mean. <laughs> but I know that eating is a big part of how you celebrate your destiny. My number one pastime. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. um, Here or and abroad. <laughs> right, yes. right. In fact, right after this. Where is a really outstanding destination for vegetarian cuisine? And where's a great destination for getting really adventuresome with, with carnivorous stuff, with, with uh, unique game meats or uh, you know, stuff that you're just not going to find in the States? So for I'm going to start backwards based on your questions. Um, for the game meats, Africa, for sure. Yeah. So South Africa, Namibia. Oftentimes when you're on safari in these lodges, they're, they're, they are pretty more meat dominant because you're mainly in land-based locations. Mm -hmm. That's where I think you're going to find the interesting things as well as Australia. Okay. Aussies like to go wild with their menu choices. For vegetarian cuisine, that's a little bit tougher, I would say. India is, is like the first place that comes to mind because you have so many people that have a purely vegetarian diet. And I think it's the food in India is so amazing and it's so diverse within the country. You have, you know, all the different states and regions have so many different of their own little vegetarian delicacies. And I think you have so much variety and it's within a country that only, you know, you have meat eaters and you have veg and non-veg portion of the population. But the veg portion only, you know, everybody's eating veg all the time. So mm -hmm. it's just naturally going to be better food. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be my top, top choice for veg. I'm trying to think other places. I mean, that is where we've talked about wellness retreats on our, yep. one of our other bonus episodes. That's also a great place because honestly, the top people in the world that do vegetarian, that do vegan, and that do raw, they're kind of centered at a lot of these resorts. So I would check those out too and just see, you know, where are you going to find the best? In terms of cities that offer the best vegetarian and vegan cuisine, I would say London is top. During the mad cow disease days, you have many people that went veg mm -hmm. and you have some of the top restaurants there. Los Angeles is also my former home. 
but has great, great vegetarian and vegan options. Now, if I want to put my toes in the sand, yes. what are some of the best places, not just, you know, in our, I know the United States has got some amazing places. So if you can give me an idea, maybe one place in the U.S. that's one of the best sandy places to go with water, and maybe someplace international, so I can kind of have a, a gauge on two different areas that might just be the best for me to stick my toes in the sand and enjoy some ocean air. Yes. Beaches, um, you know, U.S. beaches, I have to say, are probably not my forte. I would say Southern really? California. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't know what it is. I just haven't been to that many beaches. And I, I, the ones that I have been to, I just don't feel like are so great. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I like the East, I, I actually prefer the East Coast beaches to the West Coast beaches, which is rare. I mean, mm -hmm. California's in our backyard and mm -hmm. I've spent, you know, lots of time there, but they're not really, the water isn't really warm enough to swim there. So I would say probably East Coast beaches, North Carolina and South Carolina. Oh. And then just of places that I've been to, you know, kind of during that. And then in terms of best beaches in the world, I think the Caribbean is pretty hard to beat. The Caribbean and South Pacific. So in terms of the Caribbean, in terms of like sandy beaches, you said dip your toe in like the white sand. I love the Dominican Republic, the north coast of the Dominican Republic. So Cabarete, where my sister lives, and we featured it last season on the show as well. But I just think it's a great place to travel to, to kind of relax. It's very comfortable. It also happens to be the kiteboarding, one of the kiteboarding capitals of the world. Super safe, friendly. It's a place you'll go, and within four hours, you'll probably know everybody there. <laughs> you know, so you can go to the bars at night and relax and have a drink, and you'll just, it's super comfortable Kind of, it's kind of like being on spring break for an adult, you know, like enough activity, right age range, comfortable place. So I think the Caribbean, I, I do love, if you're going for luxury Caribbean, St. Bart's is beautiful, um, a lot more expensive, but beautiful. I also love the South Pacific. So Fiji would be top on that list. Like if you love water sports, if you love like stand up paddle boarding and you want to be in the reefs and you want a little bit more adventure, I think Fiji's pretty top. Sweet. Well, this has been wonderful to uh, bend the ear of who we're now going to call the travel matchmaker. <laughs> Jill, thank you. Thanks for listening. This was just a little bonus episode for you to cap off the series. Carry on only. Carry on only. Thanks for listening to Carry On Only, dedicated to inspiring your next global adventure. Listen to Jill take you around the world in style, live every week right here or 24-7 on demand at StarWorldWideNetworks.com. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. For immediate access to Jill's destination guides, blog, and show notes, please visit JillPater.com. And follow her on Instagram at JillPater.